Anyway, members, let's uh, get on. This being the final uh, planning committee of this term of office. So, I'd just like to remind you, we are in Perda. Please do not make any form of political statements or try and politicise any of the meeting because of the recording and if the rubble is shut down. Okay, so there's a bit of housekeeping. Firstly, if you hear the fire alarm, it's for real. Please go outside through the main door and congregate on the top car park. Anybody wishing to speak who does not want to be recorded, please let the committee clerk know and it won't record you while you're speaking. So anyway, we'll get on to the agenda properly. Item one, apologies and substitutes. Angela. Thank you. Apologies from councillors Archer, Buttle, Elliot, Hughes and Lees and substitutes councillors Paul Cruz and Mark Waitman. Thank you very much. Item two, approval of the minutes. I therefore move. All those in favour, please show. Okay, that's been carried. Item three, interest. Anybody declaring interest? Council of Uh Yes, uh, personal interest. I know the applicant in 5.3 and I'll be leaving the room for the debate. Right, thank you very much, Richard. So anyway, moving swiftly on. Uh, items uh, for determination. 5.1, application number 22, stroke 00641, reserve matters. Uh, this is at Ashbourne Airfield, Derby Road, Yeldersley. There is a bit of late rep, so please read through it, and then we'll move on.
Are you ready? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The first on my list to speak is Mr. Grant Anderson, his Hill Dickinson planning agent, to speak against the application. You have three minutes. I'll let you know when there's 30 seconds left. Chair, members of the planning committee, <clears throat> Uh, JCB supports the development of the wider airfield site proposed in the local plan. However, given the importance of the site and the scale of development proposed, JCB considers it's important that the development of the whole site is comprehensively planned at the outset to ensure all necessary infrastructure is in place and that a coherent, comprehensive and high quality development is achieved. In JCB's submission, that requires key stakeholders in the council to work in partnership to agree at the outset a comprehensive master plan for the entire site, both phases one and two, and to provide a framework for individual applications to come forward. In contrast with that approach, the two applications before you adopt a piecemeal approach to development, which will prejudice the comprehensive delivery of the wider site and are, in JCB's submission, unacceptable. A fundamental objection for JCB is that the Reserve Matters application fails to accommodate JCB's existing 7.5 metre wide access, which is required to provide access for its large construction vehicles and low loaders HGVs transporting large construction equipment to JCB's land for testing and training as part of the business. That access will continue to be required for a number of years until JCB's land, which is allocated for housing, comes forward as a later phase within phase two. <clears throat> The Reserve Matters application does not accommodate that 7.5 metre access. Instead, it requires JCB's HGV traffic to use an unsuitable 5 metre residential road to access JCB's land. Indeed, for JCB to use the full 7.5 metres access to which it's entitled would involve vehicles having to mount the pavements. The Reserve Matters layout will therefore inevitably lead to road safety issues, to conflict between residents and JCB's traffic, with the inevitable pressure on JCB to curtail its existing operations. Planning policy is clear at a national and local level that existing businesses should not have unreasonable constraints placed on them as a result of new development, and that is clearly the case here and the application is therefore unacceptable. JCB is also concerned the two applications will result in a poor quality access to the phase two residential allocation with the access running between industrial and commercial development. The application has also failed to demonstrate the sufficient capacity within the A52 roundabout to serve the whole of the airfield site at the increased density proposed in these applications. That should be a particular concern given that substantial public funds have been spent on the delivery of the roundabout access, specifically with the objective of providing access to serve the whole of the airfield site. JCB therefore fully supports the officers in their assessment of the two applications and respectfully requests that the two applications are refused. Absolutely spot on. Thank you very much. The next on my list is Miss Helen Bareford, the applicant to speak in favour of the application. You have five minutes. I don't know, you know, when there's 30 seconds left. Thank you, Chair. I'm speaking on behalf of David Wilson Holmes and FW Harrison Estates Limited to request that a decision on both the full and reserve matters applications for Ashbourne Airfield is deferred in favour of agreeing an extension of time to allow us to work collaboratively with the Council to address outstanding matters and overcome the proposed reasons for refusal. David Wilson Holmes has a proven track record of delivering high quality developments within Ashbourne and across the district. However, we have not been afforded sufficient time following the latest round of consultation responses, where a number have been submitted following the committee report deadline, in order to be able to adequately respond to and or make potential amendments where agreed as necessary. We strongly believe that the outstanding matters can be resolved and are committed to working with the Council, statutory consultees and third parties in a positive and proactive manner to deliver a high quality scheme on an allocated site. The principle of 367 residential dwellings on the site is secured by the hybrid planning permission and additional 101 dwellings are proposed on the site to make the most efficient and effective use of allocated land in accordance with power 124 of the MPPF. 
The council have confirmed that they consider the additional dwellings on the site to be achievable, subject to compliance with relevant provisions of the development plan and the MPPF. We set out our commitment to addressing the outstanding concerns in an email to the Council dated the 24th of March. This was further reiterated in a letter dated the 5th of April, following a meeting with the Council on the 4th, which covered each of the reasons for refusal and included additional information to address concerns. The key points regarding additional information submitted are as follows. The overall development demonstrates a 4.17 biodiversity net gain, which is in accordance with the requirements of the MPPF and the local planning policy. It is also confirmed that landscape plans provide suitable habitat and enhancement for butterflies. Traffic modelling results confirm that the new A52 access roundabout will operate within capacity. This includes all consented traffic associated with phases one and two of the allocation, the trips generated by the additional 101 dwellings, rerouted industrial estate traffic and sensitivity testing of the JCB development. A revised, a revised flood risk assessment has been submitted and we are confident all concerns over surface water drainage can be addressed. It is accepted that the additional 101 dwellings may generate additional requirements in accordance with the, with the developer contributions SVD. We have asked the council to provide requirements in relation to sports pitches for the 101 dwellings so that discussions regarding appropriate mitigation can take place. Currently, the request is based off the overall proposed development of 468 dwellings. However, mitigation for the 367 dwellings has been secured by the Hybrid Planning Commission. We are willing in principle to make amendments to the layout to address the urban design critiques. The latest layout is based upon a revised framework plan submitted following a meeting with the council and the council's urban designer. The council previously confirmed that the revised framework plan included a number of positive changes which were welcomed, including improvements to open space, arrival and centre points, improved connectivity, density gradient and placemaking by links to the history of the site. Consequently, we were extremely disappointed by the latest comments from the urban designer many of which are at a high level and do not appear to take account of the agreed parameters of the hybrid permission. Notwithstanding this, we are not averse to making further amendments to the layout design. However, we have not been provided the opportunity to engage in further layout discussions prior to committee. We acknowledge the Council's position that JCB have an extent operation on adjacent land to the airfield and in accordance with Power 187 of the MPPF, New development has a requirement to provide suitable mitigation for existing businesses where it could have a significant adverse effect on new development. We are open to discussions with both JCB and the Council regarding this concern. However, additional time is required for such discussions to take place. In summary, we are committed to delivering a high quality development on this allocated site. We respectfully request that members defer both the full and the reserve matters applications to allow for further engagement with the council, statutory consultees and relevant third parties to overcome the reasons for refusal, which we do not consider are insurmountable. We strongly believe that it is within our collective interest to proceed in this manner to enable a timely delivery of the desired high quality scheme, rather than the applications be refused, which will lead to unnecessary delays at a time when the council cannot demonstrate a five-year housing land supply and is therefore vulnerable to inappropriate development elsewhere in the district. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, anyway, over to Chris. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate this is a complex application um, with numerous reasons for refusal. Um, before I address the, the previous speakers and some of the, the comments that were made, I think it's worth just talking members through the, the late representations received. So we have had late representations from um, local residents, Ashbourne Town Council um, and the adjacent landowner. The concerns and matters raised in those late representations is largely covered in the, the officer's report. Um, the final item of, of late correspondence is a letter from um, the applicant in this case, which um, repeats a lot of what was said in the, um, the last speaker's comments request, in terms of requesting deferral and um, their comments in relation to the specific reasons for refusal in respect of this application. As officers, um, this application, um, we, we haven't taken the, the recommendation lightly. Um, we recognise that this is an important employment and housing allocation in, in our local plan. Um, you'll note from the officer's report that there's a number of concerns with this application, um, and I'll talk through some of those, those concerns now. Um, the, the first matter um, to, to, to discuss is the, um, the design and the layout of the development and the appropriateness of that. Um, the council, in recognition that this is part of a larger 
development, um, quite significant urban extension of Ashbourne. Um, we we recognised that there was a requirement to consider the site holistically um, and look at what what is in effect placemaking and and how this um, how this development would contribute to that. Um, we asked Lathams, who are a firm of architects who specialise in, in architecture and urbanism, to look at the application and assess this application against national design guide criteria. Um, there's 10 criteria um, which are geared towards effectively good quality design and, and placemaking. And this application scored poorly on numerous criteria um, as set out in, in the officer's report. Um, so in design terms, we feel that the, the application is suboptimal um, for a development or a, a site of this scale. Um, and what happens on phase one will set the scene for, um, for, for wider development on, on the airfield site. Um, we, I think in terms of addressing the, the last speaker's comments on um, the request for deferral to try and address some of these issues, I think it's worth just pointing out to members that this application was due a decision in September 2022, so some, some considerable time ago. We had engaged um, an urban designer soon after receipt of, of the, the application, and we did invite the applicant to, um, to attend meetings with, with that urban designer to help shape this development. And whilst we recognise there has been some improvements to, to the layout and, and the design of, of some aspects of the development, there are still significant concerns with, with the application. The urban designer has reappraised the amended scheme um, and has concluded that it, it again scores poorly um, against national design criteria. So we feel that we've, we've gone to some efforts to try and address, address those concerns and those discussions with the applicant have been fruitless in addressing some of the um, significant concerns we have. Um, setting design aside, there were other significant concerns with the application that were raised with the applicant fairly early on in the process, one of, one of which being the agents of change principle and the right of access that JCEB have got across the site. You'll see from the, the layout on, on the presentation that you've got housing development very closely associated with a an access which provides um, heavy goods vehicles um, access to land, um, which is used as a demonstration ground for large machinery, excavating machinery. Um, there's no restrictions on that use and um, the, the potential um, adverse impacts are significant on future residents of, of this estate and that could have um, an adverse impact on that, that existing business. That's not been properly considered as part of this application in, in officers' view. Um, there's not either an appropriate buffer um, to ensure that those impacts aren't um, significant on, on future residents or appropriate mitigation in the form of alternative access to, to the training ground hasn't been provided. Um, so that matter remains unresolved. You'll see in the late representation sheet that there is a section on the, um, the operations on adjacent land and you'll see there um, the planning history of the site. So that use is a long established use um, and our planning record suggests that the earliest permission was in 1970 for an excavator area and machine security um, place on, on the adjacent land. And there's been subsequent applications for um, training and amenity buildings on, on the site. So that is a significant constraint and a constraint that hasn't been um, fully addressed as part of this application. Um, another issue is the strategic requirements of, of the policy um, and you'll note from the officer's report that those have been um, set out. So policy DS1 of the, um, the local plan requires amongst other things provision of a comprehensive landscaping plan um, which includes retention of landscape features, provision of substantial landscape buffer between existing and new development, the provision of a landscape buffer to the rear of existing properties on Lady Hole Lane, um, provision of an area reserved for wildlife along the northeastern boundary, um, amongst other other things. And you can see on the the layout that's before you this evening that the um, the development is rather dense. is There's a linear park running through the site, um, but it doesn't address those strategic requirements of the policy. Those matters were raised some time ago, and through submission of an amended scheme, those issues haven't been um, fully considered by, by the applicant, hence why we've brought this application to you this, this evening. Um, we want to work with the applicant to try and deliver 
um, the airfield and um, and the strategic allocation in the plan, and um, we'll continue to do so. Um, however, we, we have been presented with this application, and the requirement to engage in a positive and proactive manner is considered best served in this case by issuing a decision at the earliest opportunity, allowing the, the applicant to exercise their right to appeal. It doesn't stop future discussions. We will engage with the applicant to try and address these concerns, and they can utilise a free go or free goes to submit new applications to us to, to look at addressing some of these concerns. So it doesn't represent an end in discussions to, to try and resolve some of these matters. It, it is at the start of a discussion and there's a clear um, statement or position, well, positions clear in, in the officer's report in terms of how we feel this, this development um, complies or doesn't comply with, with development pl plan policy and, 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 and national guidance. Um, I appreciate the, the history is rather complex. I think just so members are, are fully um, conversant with, with what they're considering this evening. So this application is seeks approval of reserve matters. Um, outline permission was given under a hybrid application for 367 dwellings to be built on the on the site. This application cons, um, concerns approximately 85% of that, that area of land. Um, however, the full quota, so 367 dwellings, will be delivered on 85% of, of, of the site that was approved at outline. Um, all matters were reserved, so we're considering um, all, appro all approval of reserved matters, so access, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale. Um, within the site itself, there's a, a core that's been created um, at midpoint of the, the linear park where you've got three-storey properties. You've got some flattered development on the site, some th again, some three-storey properties. And then you've got a range of um, two-storey and two-and-a-half-storey properties with, with um, a small number of, of bungalows as well. You can see on the screen there the, the range of, of house types that we're looking at. So traditional design approach has, has been adopted. There is, however, um, a wide range of, of different house types and um, quite a large palette of materials proposed. We feel that in terms of place making, um, because you've got an even spread of, of density across the site, it, it's um, it, it, it's not effective place making. In terms of character and appearance, it, it would appear as a, um, a, a typical housing, suburban housing development in officers' view. Um, we feel that's a poor response to the site and, and the opportunities it presents as a significant urban extension of, of, of Ashbourne. Um, there are some other technical issues that are addressed um, that form reasons for refusal in the officers' report, but they're also addressed in the late representation sheet um, following the, the applicant's request for deferral of the item, one of which is ecology. So you'll see the officer's response on that and why we don't feel that what's proposed um, satisfactorily addresses the concerns that have been raised here. Um, there's also um, some comments on, on highways and um, land drainage. Um, happy to take, take questions at, at this stage. Okay, Councillor Slack. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, my well, I've heard a few questions really, but my first question is why is affordable housing at 15% so low on this application? We're a big application like this, so 15%. Okay, we have to go back in time on this one. Um, originally, outline permission was approved, um, I think it was 2015, and as part of that application, a viability argument was presented to the district council. Um, that they couldn't deliver the full quota or the full amount of all housing and deliver the, the development. So a viability argument was presented, um, which revised down the amount of affordable housing to be delivered to that level. Um, there was then a hybrid application in 2019, and that at that time, um, the original outline was an extant permission, so it was a material consideration. And those... Um, that viability argument was carried through into the into the new permission that was granted, um, and that was based on the development of, of 367 dwellings and obviously all the associated employment development as well. Um, that that has permission, so there is permission in outline for 367 dwellings, and that is a material consideration for us in respect of this application. But what's happened is obviously there's some windfall development, if you like, or additional development, or that 
that's we have to assess that on its merits. It doesn't have a bearing on the viability of, of, of this this application. Thank you, Chris. I thought we said he got a couple of questions, Peter. Did he say you got a couple of questions? Uh, thank you, Chair. Okay. Councillor Rose first. Um, thank you. Um, this is a huge brown, brownfield site. It's very, very important to the de development of Ashbourne. But while we're talking about it now, shouldn't we have been talking about it years past or months past? And we should have had a plan for the whole site rather than individual developers just coming forward, you know, and asking really for, you know, just for, for what they can get on the land they've, the land they've got. Um, the site also needs careful planning for leisure facilities. You know, we're talking about hundreds of people living here. You know, what are all these children going to, going to do? Where are the playing fields? Where, where's the park? There's so many questions, I think, to be, to be answered um, before really we, we get to making a decision. OK, thank you very much. Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Chris, can I, can I ask you if you agree with me on, on two fundamental points? Uh, firstly, that your, your recommendation to refuse could have been avoided if the applicant had come forward with the uh, master plan that they were asked to do um, a couple of years ago. And secondly, that um, you agree that the design approach uh, to this application is so fundamentally flawed that um, a, um, a refusal is the only uh, way forward and deferral is simply not appropriate. I think in, in answer to your second question first, I, I agree, I'd say yes is, is my view on, on that. Um, with regards to the first question, there was a requirement for the applicant to, um, to submit a master plan in discharging the, um, I think it was condition three of the hybrid planning, planning application. They did submit a, a master plan to us, which set out um, where employment some, the employment development would go and broadly set out where the housing element would be sited on site. The master plan. What the master plan didn't do was approve the detail of this application because the detail of this application was reserved for subsequent approval, and that's what we're considering this evening. Okay, Councillor uh, Donnelly. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Chris, can I just ask you to clarify the um, entrance that is allocated to JCB? Can you actually tell me the width of that entrance for, H for heavy vehicles and, and all, all traffic? Yeah, JCB in their um, comments to us and in, in their representations this evening um, have a right of access through the site and they, can, they have said that, that that right of access includes a seven and a half metre wide um, access route and the plan makes provision for a five metre entrance into the site and then there's a dotted line that represents 7.5 metres which does some, show some encroachment onto, onto footways through the site and, and houses being position in very close proximity to, to that access route. Coming back on that chair, I think when I saw the, the, the application the this afternoon, I wasn't quite uh, convinced that that was adequate, to be honest with you, for HCV, for, for JCB actually. Okay, nobody else down for questions, I'll move into debate. O'Brien. Well, I'd like to move the uh, recommend recommendation, uh, Chair, and I, I, I welcome it, and I, I particularly welcome the, the reasons behind the recommendation. Uh, I, think, I think I'm right in saying this is the first major application to be assessed against uh, the national design criteria. And uh, I hope that this gives confidence to, to members of this committee to, um, to, to agree that applications can be refused on, uh, on design grounds. I think this is something we've been nervous of doing in the past because uh, people have felt uh, that design is um, 
perhaps a matter of individual taste. But I think it's clear from the officer's appraisal of this application that it's not. It's about creating uh, places of quality. Uh, it's about creating places that reflect the architectural traditions of the Derbyshire Dales. It's not about opening page 47 of a pattern book and selecting uh, a design which um, the, that particular house builder uh, thinks is going to sell for the most profit. I think this refusal will give a clear message to developers that this council uh, will no longer accept uh, mediocre housing development, not just in Ashbourne, but throughout the Derbyshire Dales. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Slucky, you wish to second that? Uh, Chair, yeah, thank you. Do, do you want to answer uh, yes, now? Yes, thank you. Also, uh, I'd like to uh, comment on uh, a number of problems with this uh, application. Um, it, the same as... Uh, Central heating. I mean, it's gas central heating again, and we come into the time when we should be reducing gas central heating. There's no mention of deep borehole um, heat pumps or uh, air source heat pumps. There's no mentioning of them in the, the application. And a lot more, the flooding aspect is a great, a great problem and needs to be sorted out. There's so many things wrong with this application that I totally agree with uh, the officers on this, and I, um, I second this, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Fitzherbert. Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> well, it has, those of us who, uh, who live near Ashbourne know this is a really big project and it, it's essential that we, we get this right. I mean, those of us who were on the, the site visit today, you can see the, the, you know, the roadway that's already been created into, into site for the, for the subsequent works and everything. Um, you know, I'm not a great analyzer of, of detail, but I know people who are, and they're sitting uh, 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 to my right. And we, we have officers to analyze this detail and to look at the whole of this hybrid application. We've got to remember it's a hybrid application with, with various owners as well. And um, we've asked them to analyze the detail and come to a conclusion in that. Although I have, you know, some sympathy with the idea of uh, the, 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 the the, um, the thought of a deferral, I, I, I think we've really got to agree with our officers tonight on this one. I, I think, and it's a great shame that we've got to, to refuse this tonight. You know, I want, I think all members here want, you know, to be proud of Ashbourne, to be proud of this approach into uh, our town and, and the district. And I'm afraid, I think, sadly and regrettably, we've got to refuse this particular application tonight. Okay, thank you, Councillor Vizier, but Councillor Donnelly. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Well, I agree with what's been said in the, in the previous speakers. And if I refer you to page 24, I think it states exactly what, why we're refusing it, because I'm looking at there's, there's no infrastructure mentioned, there's no, there's no facilities up there, there's no surgeries. And if, if you look at that, I think it tells you exactly everything that is wrong with this application. So I'm happy to go with the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much, Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Allison. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm happy to support the recommendation of refusal on this application. Um, I, was, I was really quite disappointed, actually, when I saw it and I saw what David Wilson Holmes were proposing because, actually, they've built an estate in Dovebridge of 180 homes, which um, is really, really pretty good. It's got a lot of open space. Um, it's well designed um, and, um, you know, there was a lot of antagonism towards it when it was first developed, but actually now it's there. I know there's, you know, a lot of um, positivity about it and as, you know, an, an estate for people to live on, it, it is pretty good, actually. I think what I'd like to pick up on, though, is um, the fact that this is a major development for the district. Um, there was a lot of public funds spent on uh, getting access into that site and it's really disappointing that we haven't got an overall plan, that we haven't led on that as a district council, um, that we should have, um, you know, if we're, if we're employing Lathams to look at the designs coming forward, why aren't we employing Lathams to actually present us with an outline that developers can come along and work towards Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. I've got nobody else on my list. But what I'd like to say to the applicant and to JCB here is please consider coming to the District Council and getting an overarching master plan for phase one and phase two so we don't get to this. Okay, anyway, we'll go to the vote. It's been moved and seconded for all. refusal. All those in favour, please show. All those against. So it's been refused unanimously. Okay, moving on, item 5.2, which is application 22 stroke 00642 full, the erection of 101 proper dwellings with associated access at uh, and between Ashbourne Airfield and Derby Road. Now, uh, there is a little bit of late rep, so I'll let you read that first and then we'll move on. Are you happy? Or do you want a bit more time? Councillor Burfoot, are you happy? Okay. In which case then we'll move on. I have two speakers again on this. The first is Mr Grant Anderson, Hill Diggers and Planning Agent to speak against. You have three minutes. And I'll let you know when you have 30 seconds left. Chair, I won't be taking three minutes. Just thank, you, thank you very much. <laughs> Just to confirm, I mean, obviously the JCB right of access point doesn't apply to this application, but our other comments uh, and objections in relation to producing the comprehensive development of the wider airfield site phases one and two do apply, and that's that's all I've got to say. Okay, thank you very much. Right, it's Helen Bevard, the applicant. You have five minutes. I'll let you know when you've got 30 seconds left. Um, likewise, the comments I've made previously in regards to the reserve matters application were made um, in reference to both the full and the reserve matters taken as a whole. Um, we did strongly believe that deferral was the more collaborative approach. We do appreciate that there is some work to do in regards to design. Um, but yeah, we don't have any further comments to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyway, Chris, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this application concerns the remaining 15% approximately of land that was um, approved in outline for up to 367 dwellings. This is presented as standalone full application because it goes outside or beyond the, the numbers that were approved by the, the, the hybrid, sorry, hybrid um, planning permission that's in place. 
So it concerns the um, the northwestern section of the site. It's a part of the site to be built out by Barrett Homes, uh, which I believe is a subsidiary of, of David Wilson um, Bar Barrett's company. Um, so that the house types are slightly different. We've got um, we've got 18 house types um, on on this part of of the site. We've got um, the, the majority, vast majority of it being serviced off the um, the main the main access um, off off the link road, which serves a majority of housing development. There is a, a separate spur that serves a flatter development um, just to the north, um, which you can just about make out on that that image before you. Um, Again, this application, because it's presented as a, a full application, presents issues in terms of the airfield being planned and, and delivered in a, a comprehensive manner. Um, there's very little, or well, there's no open space provision um, serving this part of the, the development. Um, it relies on the open space and, um, and, and attenuation that would be s delivered on the, the approval reserve matters application. This part of the site scores very poorly when we look at um, the National Design Guide criteria. You've got um, dense developments, you've got um, development dominated by, by cars on, on the frontages of the properties, um, and you've got sporadic development in terms of the or mixture of um, different house types, scales, and, and, and wide palette of, of materials again. Um, in terms of reasons for refusal, we've got um, technical reasons. We've got the, um, the inadequacy or insufficient information currently to demonstrate that um, the surface water attenuation basin, um, which was planned and designed to serve the employment development and the link road, is capable of accommodating some additional capacity from some of the development on site. We've got lack of um, space, comprehensive network of, of space for um, habitat that um, will be lost for butterfly habit habitats, a dinghy skipper and small heath butterfly. Um, we've got a lack of a plan in terms of comprehensive habitat compensation for those species. Um, and again, this this site, if we accept this site, it, it has a bearing on on the the delivery of the comprehensive delivery of the site and meeting some of the strategic objectives of policy DS1 in terms of open space provision, uh, wildlife corridors buffers between existing and, and proposed development. Um, it raises all of those same same issues. Um, so there's, you'll note there's, um, an extra, there's five reasons for refusal in respect of this application because it is presented to us in, a, um, in full. Um, so it has to be assessed on its merits. It does deliver the, the full quota or the requisite requirements in terms of um, affordable housing and also housing, housing mix, um, but it doesn't deliver open space requirements in isolation it is rely, reliant on um, on the, the approval reserve matters application and th there's no um, requirement or no provision for any playing fields as well on the back of, of this development so when the hybrid application was considered there's a requirement for one and a half playing fields and it was envisaged that, that would be delivered on, on phase two land but now we've got additional developments on, on the site um, there's no provision for um, for playing fields to, to serve that part of the development, or so no comprehensive plan for where those playing fields will be will be located on site. So there's various reasons for refusal. I'm happy to take take questions on on this this standalone full application. Members, questions, or do you want to go straight into debate? Councillor Donny. Well, thank you, Chair. Um, again, on the site visit this afternoon, I'm knowing the area very well. I think it's a very, very poor application. I think that's something that's just been thrown in there and, and it just just doesn't fit into the area at all, especially along where all the properties are on Lady Old Lane. So I'm happy to move to a recommendation for review. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Slack. Chair, uh, there's so, the service has said before, there's so much wrong with this application and Chris has outlined a great number of things what need to be changed. So there's no choice but to refuse this. So, um, please, second, Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else wishing to speak in debate? No? In which case, then I'll go to the vote. It's been moved and seconded for refusal. All those in favour, please show. Who's against? And any abstention? So that's been unanimously refused. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on, application 5.3. 
with erection of two normally holly lit accommodation units and erection of one holiday pod at Woodside, Chesterville Road, Rosley, Matlock. So we have no late reps, we have no speakers. I don't think we Angela have we got any spare copy of the agenda. I think you have the committee clerks. Right, okay. So like I say, there's no late reps, there's no speakers. Adam. Thank you, Chair. Um this site is in Oak Countryside, east of Rosley, and uh, members visited the site this afternoon. Um, property comprises dwelling and holiday lets, uh, which is occupied by the applicant. Um, they're the buildings to the left of the site plan. Um, the application proposes the erection of two holiday chalets um, and one uh, holiday camping pod. You can see there the two chalets um, just to the east of the dwelling and the camping pod is just to the north of the site. Difficult to see on that one. Um, this, this site is 500 metres from Rosley, which is about a five to ten minute walk along Chesterfield Road or footpath which runs along the northern boundary of this site. Um, so in principle, officers satisfied that the site is in a sustainable location and therefore in principle uh, development of this nature is acceptable. Key issues are the visual and landscape impact of the development, which is 500 metres away from the boundary of the Peak District National Park and visible from Chesterfield Road and footpath running along the side of Chesterfield Road. Um, the structures would be screened to an extent by existing trees and we saw that on site but will be prominent from the road and from the footpath and visible from across the valley from the Peak District National Park. Um, development therefore would not be well screened, contrary to policy C9. And the development would also result in harm to the setting of the toll house, which is on the other side of the Chesterfield Road, and that's pointed out on site as well. Um, the county archaeologist also objects on the grounds of lack of supporting information in regard to potential impact on below ground archaeology. Um, and this forms a secondary reason for refusal on the tech on this as a technical matter. Happy to answer any questions. Councillor Rose. Um, I'd like to propose that we um, accept this development. Um, having visited this afternoon, um, the, ap the applicants already offer high quality holiday accommodation. Uh, it's an area where people love to stay and really it's very very carefully screened it's quite remote it won't be upsetting upsetting anybody at all and you know i think uh, small developments like this should be applauded so i would i would ask that the applicant is supported here so you're moving it for approval councillor rose yes yes okay does that find a second councillor donnelly yeah, thank you, Chair. Yes, on the the visit this afternoon, I was quite impressed with the area. I don't think that um, it'll have a great impact on the landscape at all, really. And I think, like Councillor Rose says, we need more and more accommodation for tourists in the area. I think it's a lovely spot. What a fantastic view from there. And I don't think when when it all boils down, there's going to be much. Uh, there'll be no impact on it at all. So, and I think that we've got to take into consideration in this day and age um, about uh, tourists and the and Dales. So I'm up to that then. Okay. Councillor O'Brien. Just going to ask, I'd, I'd like to hear um, a full um, a full explanation of the proposal from officers before we move into proposals, Chair. Uh, anybody can move. Well, I thought we were on. I thought we were on questions. If you can still move something in questions, if you want to ask a question, ask a question. Well, that's my question. Could we please? No, my question the question why, has to why, be prudent. My question to the application. is. My question is why can we not hear an explanation of the, uh, of the sort of proposal? Anybody else wanted a question? No. Oh, so I'll move into debate. Anybody else wishing to speak in debate? No? In which case, then, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour of approval? 
uh, uh, conditions. Um, have we got some bog standard conditions we could apply to this? Yeah, um, I can. I've got some draft conditions uh, minded to approve. Um, given uh, the archaeology archaeology um, comments, I'd recommend a condition to agree a written scheme of investigation, um, a construction environment management plan, landscape environment management plan, tree surveys, um, foul drainage to make sure that's disposed of to package treatment plants rather than septic tanks. Um, details of the landscaping scheme, details of external lighting, um, and removing permitted development rights just to ensure that the, because these structures may actually fall within the definition of a caravan to make sure that they are sited in these locations and can only be this type of yeah. caravan rather than any other like for static or something like that, and restrict occupancy to temporary holiday accommodation so they can't be occupied as permanent dwellings. Okay, I'll move in a second. I'm happy with those conditions. Happy chair with those conditions. Yeah, happy councillor Rose. Okay, in which case then we'll go to the vote. So it's been moved and seconded for approval. All those in favour, please show. All those against. And any abstentions? So I'm abstaining. So I get a casting vote. So I'll go with uh, Councillor Rose and Councillor Dolly for approval. Sorry about that. So, uh, we'll have to do it together. All those in favour, please show. One, two, three, four. All those against, five. An abstention, which is me. So, it's failed. So, we need to go to the substantive motion. So, we need to put that on the table. Councillor Slack. Thank you, Chair. I recommend that we support the officers in their recommendation, Chair. Second. Okay, so all those in favour of officer's recommendations, please show. And all those against. So it's been refused. Okay. Ah, moving swiftly on. Application. Yeah. Application 5.4. It's gardens. There is some late reps on this, so I'll let you read that and then we'll move on to the speakers. Happy. Yeah. Okay. I have a few speakers on this. So the first on my list is Councillor Vicky Rains from Parish, from Tansey Parish Council, to speak in favour of the application. You have three minutes. I'll let you know when there's 30 seconds left. 
uh, Tansley Parish Council will be supporting this application with some provisos. Stancliffe's Homes brought plans to share with our community after going through pre-app with the LA, the first developer in our village to respect the Localism Act. We welcome the inclusion of bungalows at the entrance to the site, as they respected the topography of the green field, which is adjacent to the conservation area, ensuring the entrance was not overpowering in relation to adjacent properties and giving a feeling of openness when entering the development. Why then have planners imposed changes to the entrance to the site, requiring the substitution of two-storey homes rather than the favoured bungalows, making the development appear overbearing and urban in nature and not reflecting the village setting? We request that should this committee approve this application, the bungalows at the entrance are reinstated as per the plan that Derbyshire Dales District Council originally advised upon. 106 contributions are supposed to be related to the site and mitigate development for those affected. We question why there is no allocation for the local primary school. We presume the financial allocation for allotments is for Tansley. Please can this be recorded within the legal documents to ensure the parish receives these funds for future allotment use. Finally, building on green fields does not reflect on the council favourably bearing in mind its supposed eco-credentials. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next on my list is Mr Mick Pursehouse, local resident, speaking in this application. You have three minutes. I'll let you know when there's 30 seconds left. Can, can you turn the microphone on, please? That's it. Right. When my wife and I uh, first moved into Tony Close, um, that's over five years ago. At that point in time, the plan showed one uh, detached house, obviously our living room window, and that house was end on to our living room window. We think that that plan took our amenity into account. The current plan has five two-storey houses opposite our property and two further double two-storey houses on either side of that and there are five gardens going to be abutting our property in that plan. So we think this surely constitutes an excessive encroachment on our privacy as well as uh, causing unpleasant and encroaching noise and disturbance. Further, the density of the housing isn't in keeping with the location and it will be overbearing, cramped and too dense. Uh, we never imagined that uh, a row of nine houses would be built right next to where we live, let alone be approved by the council. And contrary to what has previously been said, all of the residents of Tony Close object to the plan as it stands on grounds of privacy and harmony with the existing environment. So we therefore ask that this committee reject the plan as it stands and have it amended to take into account our amenity, that of our neighbours, and have bungalows positioned opposite Tony Close. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The next on my list is Mr. Andrew Bostock, local resident, to speak against the application. You have three minutes. And similarly, I'll let you know when you have 30 seconds left. Can you turn to speak? Microphone up, please. Well, uh, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, councillors. Thank you for coming this afternoon and having a look at the outlook from Tony Close. I appreciate that. Um, I didn't get a chance to, to introduce myself then. Uh, I'm Andy Bostock. I live at number three, Tawny Close. And as my neighbour, uh, Mick Pursehouse, has just said, all of us feel exactly the same, that this development, as it is proposed, is extremely intrusive and will completely wreck our privacy and our amenity. Now, a question was raised, which I'd like to, um, which I'd like to clarify because uh, the question was raised, I think it was by uh, Councillor Burford, uh, had these objections been brought to the attention of the developer? 
and indeed they had. Um, we heard nothing about this development until a letter dated the 8th of November. Um, I do understand that Stancliffe Homes consulted with the parish council prior to that. We didn't know anything about that. We weren't informed either by Stancliffe or by the parish council. Um, when we got the letter, we studied the plans and we were horrified to see the way those plans had varied from the previous plan that was passed in, 20, in 2019. So I then wrote, and I wrote in two letters on the 24th and the 26th of November, giving detail, not just saying we don't like this, but saying exactly why we didn't like this. But further than that, saying, you know, bungalows would go a long way towards uh, uh, ameliorating our concerns. Um, we don't really want building behind our uh, our residences anyway, but if there were bungalows, that would make a big difference because if I stand on my um, if I stand on my landing and look out of the window, I can tell you that every single one of those nine houses that are proposed to be built along the boundary, I will be looking straight into their bedrooms, and from every one of those nine, they will be looking straight down into the back gardens of the residences of Tawny Close, not to mention the Close itself. Now, I was, I was, the, the question was asked, was this brought to the attention of the developer? And I'm going to read... 30 seconds left. Uh, okay, well, here is a letter from Paul Bedwell representing the developer, developers to the planning officer, 6th of January, referring to these uh, objections and, in my view, simply sweeping them aside. And in my view, that's exactly what the officer's report does. So what I would like, please, is for councillors to represent the public in this, that is, the public of this locality, Three minutes are up. and Sorry. to reject it. Okay. Thank you. Right. The last on my list is Mr. Sam Jones, the applicant, to speak in favour of the application. You have five minutes. And similarly, I'll let you know with the 30 seconds left. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you to the chair, to committee members and to councillors for visiting our site this afternoon and for taking the time to consider our proposals this evening. Um, the application before you today is for the development of 47 new homes on land adjacent to Tansley House Gardens in Tansley. And as you'll be aware, in 2019, uh, Derbyshire's District Council granted full planning permission uh, for 49 dwellings on this site. And furthermore, the adopted local plan allocates this site for residential development. And the proposals before you have been subject to a lot of detailed discussions with officers and a range of specialist reports have been submitted and reviewed by various statutory consultees. There are no technical objections to the development and we concur with your officer's conclusion. Uh, that the proposed development would bring significant benefits and complies with all relevant national and planning policy. Furthermore, to date, as the case officer's report highlights, only nine, uh, only nine people have raised objections to elements of this application. And whilst this is nine more than ideally we would like, we do feel that this is a strong indicator that there's minimal public objection to the proposed development. Um, instead of spending the rest of my time talking to you about national policy, five-year housing land supply, and all the things that you're already aware of. I really just wanted to take the time to simply talk you through how we've approached the proposals to date and why I ask for your support in the application this evening. And um, first, we've engaged at an early stage with local residents. Uh, we recognize the value that community engagement can bring during the planning process. And I would thank the chair of Tansley Parish Council for the good natured and constructive way that they've approached us as a developer here. We've met with various uh, residents, parish councillors, and there has been an open meeting available to all residents of Tansley uh, as part of this application. And the constructive feedback that those sessions provide has been incorporated in the proposals before you today, wherever we've deemed it possible. Second, we've endeavoured to design a scheme which will deliver uh, a wide mix of high quality homes for the village. Our proposals deliver one, two, three, four, and five bedroom houses and two and three bedroom bungalows, which will cater for a wide range of housing needs. A number of the homes on site will also be designated for first homes, the new government scheme, which will mean they're secured for first time buyers only, and they'll receive a 30% discount on the market value to help them get on to the housing ladder. Third, 
the materials that we've proposed, I think are entirely appropriate for the local area. We've ensured that every elevation of every home on site uh, will be built in natural stone. This was a matter of great importance to the parish council. And we've also incorporated a range of natural uh, stone walling to many of the front boundaries, which is a characteristic you see throughout the village. Fourth, I think all of us here recognize the value of the natural environment. And we're pleased that our proposals demonstrably result in a 19% increase in biodiversity value of the site. The site's been designed to ensure that only two existing trees are lost, and this is more than offset by the 41 new trees that we're planting as part of the development. Uh, and finally, we've committed to providing both electric vehicle charging points and solar panels on every home in the development. We recognise that Derbyshire Dales places great importance on energy sustainability, as do we as a company, and we believe that our proposals conform with those objectives entirely. Um, one matter that has been brought up in, by the speakers before me this evening is the impact of our proposals on really two uh, existing dwellings that sit adjacent to our site on Tawny Croft. And whilst I respect those opinions uh, that have been shared, I don't share the view that our proposals in any way will have an unacceptable impact on those existing homes. I just take the opportunity to point out the numbers one and two Tawny Croft sit over two and a half metres higher than the finished floor level of the closest proposed development on our site. And there's over 21 metres separation distance between the rear of those dwellings and the homes on Tawny Croft, which meets widely accepted design principles in national planning policy. As such, I am confident that the homes in this area won't have an unacceptable impact on those occupiers. Uh, finally, I just wanted to highlight that the application before you is not from a speculative land trader, but from a local house builder, and we employ a number of people in the local area. Should the committee choose to grant permission this evening, Stancliffe uh, Homes would commit to working, uh, commencing the works on site within the coming weeks. And it's really just to say that we are determined to deliver a high. Left. Thank you. Uh, we are determined to de deliver a high quality development of new homes that meets the needs of a wide range of occupiers, and that we truly hope will be a credit to the village. As such. I respectfully request that members approve this application in line with your officer's recommendation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sarah. Obviously, we visited the site today. Um, um, the site is allocated for 49 dwellings. Um, our pro the proposal before you is for 47. Um, there was a previous application in 2019 um, that has now lapsed, so it can't, it, it, you know, there is no permission as it stands. Um, and in designing this layout, etc., um, it's taken on board the, the site constraints in terms of drainage, um, protected trees um, surrounding the site um, and the land levels all have brought up constraints that um, meant the layout did have to change in order for it to be developed. Um, in, as part of this proposal, Tansley House Gardens would be brought up to adoptable standard where it meets Church Street um, and the main estate road would be adopted. We have um, sought to negotiate amendments during the application process in terms of the layout, house types, does drainage and impacts on trees and biodiversity. Um, obviously, there's an update in the late reps with regard to the biodiversity element um, where the Wildlife Trust have given their opinion um, about the, um, the, the biodiversity net gain and what it achieves. Um, and obviously, I've given my officers response to that, which will have read. Um, in terms of the in, in terms of the bungalows that keep being mentioned, obviously they were on the original submission. Um, it was felt that in design terms, they didn't frame the entrance and it, you know, the surrounding area is two storey houses. Um, the bungalows were felt to be more appropriate next to the, the landscape buffer, um, next to the conservation area. and. You know, it's all looked at in terms of the change from bungalows to the two storey houses. They meet the, you know, the distances between windows. And obviously we've got land level information um, with finished floor levels for each property. And a quite a detailed assess was, assessment was made 
and that's considered to be an acceptable relationship between existing properties and the proposed properties. So overall, um, the layout creates is considered to create views through the site to the surrounding area, provides softer edges to the open space, and um, provides a bespoke approach to housing design that is considered to be in character with the area. Happy to take questions. Councillor Slack. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think my question has been partly answered by Sarah. I was going to ask for an amendment on the bungalows, but you've answered that question. Uh, so uh, I have the question now. She's answered it. Oh, I well. think it's excellent. Uh, oh, well. Right, moving on, I'll take Councillor Burfoot. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to make, um, just to be clear about the tenure of, 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 the, of the new roads. I think um, Sarah's explained that they will be adopted, but the, the Tansley House Garden Road is unadopted at the present time. So, as this is the access road, will, the, will that road be upgraded before construction begins on the development or not? As far as I um, understand it, the the only reason that it's not up to adoptable standards is really to do with the drainage and there's no street lighting. Um, it's width and the, the footpaths, etc., is up to level. So um, I, I can't really comment on how it will work and when they will um, do that, but I would think it would be very early in the process, yes, to bring it up to standard. You're getting a nod from the developer. Councillor Sorry, a nod? Yes. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, I do now come on to the contentious um, aspect of um, these properties that are adjacent to Tawny Croft that are proposed <laughs> at the moment to be two-storey houses. Now, c can I just be clear, has there, or, has there or has there not been any discussion at any point with the developer to try and... Um, and change this because this seems to be this well certainly for me this seems to be the sticking point on this development obviously um we made the amendments for design reasons but if there was if we felt there was amenity <laughs> concerns and that they needed to put bungalows we would have requested that we haven't we've assessed it on the basis of the design and the two-storey houses meet all the requirements because the site is lower. We've taken that on board and, you know, you've got a distance of over 21 metres between windows on every property, on it, between existing and proposed properties. So there's no amenity reason in my mind to ask for it. And we feel the design required an entrance where it was two-storey properties, which was more in character with what's surrounding it. No more. Councillor Berthel, no. Councillor O'Brien. Yes, thank you, Chair. I wanted to ask a, a question on the affordable housing uh, element. Um, I see that all the social rented housing is proposed to be provided off-site uh, and that there's no provision on-site uh, for example, for older persons, um, social rented accommodation. Um, the parish council were very clear in their response that they felt a proportion of the uh, affordable housing should be provided uh, on site by way of social rented. Have any just, and I would expect the parish council to. Um, if you like to 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 know best the requirement for affordable housing within within the village, how many discussions taken place with the parish camp with with the parish council as to um, whether the affordable housing element could be amended so that there is provision for a small number of social rented units within the development? The answer is no, but obviously the for affordable housing. Um, provision has been um, been negotiated by the Director of Housing. Okay. Councillor Allison. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've just got, a, it, it's a very general question and it's kind of picking up on something that the applicant's agent um, 
uh, mentioned, which is the housing supply. Is a five-year housing supply still required? Thank you. Um, in this particular case, we're dealing with a, a site that's allocated in the development plan for, for housing development. But we are in a scenario as a district council where we can't demonstrate a five-year housing land supply. And what national policy um, requires in, in, in that consideration is that we give um, we apply a tilted balance in favour of the development unless there are significant and demonstrable reasons for, for refusing development. So we're in, a, we're in a situation where the development complies with the development plan because it's an allocated site, but um, with our five-year housing land supply, we're in that tilted balance um, arena as well in that we, haven't, we can't demonstrate a five-year housing land supply, so we have to give great weight to that in, in our decision-making. Okay, can I just come back on that? Because I know that some councils have actually, because that target is not no longer required. I thought that was a new government policy. Yeah, just coming back on that, there's consultation on changes to the MPPF, um, which makes some revisions to um, to how we um, approach housing land supply. Um, but that is just a consultation. It's not policy or, or guidance at, at this moment in time. It's just consultation exercise that's been carried out. And in reality, what that actually means is is anyone's guess at this time. I've got one more question about the um, social housing provision. Um, I mean, there's a there's a number in there about three hundred and sixty thousand for eight social rented units. What do you know where they're going to be delivered? Normally, the director of housing would request that it's um, that affordable housing is delivered somewhere in the the Derbyshire Dales district. Um, so it'd have to be in, in Derbyshire Dales district, and often the director of housing. Um, prefers, if you like, commuters some towards affordable housing delivery because sometimes development can come forward in an area at the same time and there might be a saturation of affordable housing in, in that location. And with a commuter sum, you can um, tap into other money that's available, the other government funding to deliver more in terms of affordable housing on other sites. So it's, it's often seen as a, a more favourable way of, of delivering affordable housing in those scenarios. Okay. I'm moving to debate. Councillor Fitzherbert. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, I think those of us who were there uh, this afternoon on the site visit saw a very clean, tidy site. Preparation was good. There had been a thorough appraisal. And um, uh, if you compare that to the other application we saw earlier tonight, uh, where perhaps the developers hadn't been quite as responsible, um, uh, this, this, this was being uh, uh, applauded. I think there's good practice there. I appreciate the concerns of the uh, residents locally who have uh, commented and, and written in to us uh, previously to that. Uh, but once again, you know, I defer to the, to the knowledge and expertise of our offices. And Sarah's explained, uh, you know, how, she, how she's plotted that uh, from, uh, from, from the desk. Okay, so. Uh, I'm happy with that, and I'm thrilled that Tansy Parish Council are, are behind the scheme. I think you've got some great responsible developers there, and I'd like to move officers' recommendation for approval. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fitzherbert. Councillor Wakeman. Yes, I'd like to second it, Chair, please. Do you, do you want to speak in debate, or do you no. want to reserve the right? No. Okay. Councillor Burfoot. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, I think... We know that the principle of development's been uh, established here. And I think there are some very good um, things about this development. I mean, we can list solar panels that we certainly don't always get in development. So that's, that's excellent. Um, we've got a biodiversity net gain. We've got, um, we've got natural stone buildings, no red brick, thank you. Um, we've got the first ho first homes scheme, so we've got lots of good 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 things here from as Councillor Fitzherbert said from a, a responsible developer. But my 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 problem, as um, explained by the residents of, of Tony Croft, is about the layout. It's purely about the layout. Um, I cannot understand why. Two-storey houses are not built further down that sloping site. There was a, we, we've had an instance of this in Matlock where I think we made a big mistake on the treetops estate where we've got, um, in full view, 
from everybody who goes along Astor Lane. We've got three story houses that stand out like, well, they just stand out. So I just cannot understand why to, why we're not asking for these bungalows to go um, adjacent to, to Tony Croft so that the impact on those residents of Tony Croft um, isn't an adverse impact. It just seems the sensible thing to do and I really can't understand why we've not asked them to do that there obviously will be an impact on on those residents of Tony Croft but if there were bungalows there it wouldn't be as as, as big so um it's all about the layout for me thank you okay Councillor Burville last on my list is Councillor Slack and then we'll go to the vote uh thank you chair yeah, I think it's an excellent uh, development, really. Uh, as Council Fitzherbert has pointed out, we have lots of pluses on this. 60% uh, affordable housing going to other sites. Uh, first stone, 25%. Uh, shared ownership, 15, over 15%. It's it's all good, very good. Completely different to the first application tonight. But uh, as Council Burford said, there's just a little problem there with the people in, in the Tony Close, which have... Uh, experienced um i know you have a right to uh, light but to not to review the old saying was wasn't it in plenty and probably the lights all right but the view's been taken away so it is difficult and uh, i probably may have be better if the developer does look and and switch it round to bungalows maybe possible is it too late at this stage you know I'd like to, I won't go against this application, but I'd like to see it slightly amended, so as Councillor Burford has suggested. Thank you, Chair. Okay, the last time on my list, even though I said I wasn't having anybody, is Councillor Cruz. Thank you, Chair. What's our scope for uh, seeking an amendment so that we can adjust the, uh, the approach, so that we can take a look at these bungalows being placed, or bungalows being placed in a, in a more positive location for the residents that have raised the concerns. It seems to me as well that uh, the Parish Council are in favour of development. There's lots of reasons why, I'm sure, but uh, there were some provisos, so I don't think they were fully in favour of the development as it's laid out. Um, so I'm just wondering if our officers could guide us in terms of how technically we could achieve feedback to the developer to take another look. Yeah, just coming back on that, Councillor Cruz, there's a number of uh, matters to consider. Um, one being, obviously, we've got a, a layout in front of us and a developer that's wanting to get on and, and build these houses. Um, if members were minded to defer the item um, to consider an alternative layout, you'd have to be very specific in terms of what you'd, you'd require in order to address your concerns. Um, that will result in, in delay um, of a couple of months because there's no um, there's no planning committee in, in, in May. So the next committee would be in June. Um, assuming we could get the item back to committee in the early summer. Um, the other thing to consider is the necessity of um, bungalows in that location. We appreciate that obviously there's concerns from residents that live um, in that part of the settlement in terms of the impact of the new development on, on their residential amenity. We've explained that that is acceptable in planning terms um, and we feel that um, having bungalows in that location would result in a suboptimal layout and um, from a design perspective so what might be to the benefit of some of the residents that live in that area could be to the detriment of, of, of the scheme in terms of the quality of, of development that's ultimately delivered uh, looking at that section flooring there you've got houses on the higher level um, adjacent to this site it makes perfect sense to me to continue that built form and, and scale in that location and for the scale to peter out as you um, as you transition to, to countryside and i think that 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 development and the layout and, and and what's been proposed here is is acceptable in that respect okay nobody else down on my list who has been moved and seconded for approval as set out in the report all those in favor please show all those against and any abstentions so he's been carried it's been approved anyway ladies and gentlemen what I'm going to do now is we are going to have a slight recess. So, if could everybody be back for 20 to 8? Thank you.
Anyway, members, I'll reconvene um, the next application, 5.5, which is application number 22 stroke 01316 full, construction of a place of mixed use, discovery centre and associated landscaping, drainage and car park at the National Stone Centre in Middleton by Worksworth. There's some late reps, so I'll let you read through that first, and then we'll move on with the speakers. Right, is everybody happy? Councillor Slack, you happy? Okay, which case, I'll move on. The first on my list is Mr Nick Sibley, local resident, to comment on the application. You have three minutes, and I'll let you know when there's 30 seconds left. Just turn the microphone on. That's it. Um, I refer to the above planning application and the proposed foul drainage shown on drawing number 1209 stroke P03 Rev A titled Drainage Strategy. Uh, the foul drainage system within the stone centre extends from the Derbyshire Eco Centre down to the Worksworth Industrial Estate to Manhole 7702 on, uh, uh, on the public sewer. The foul drainage system within the Stone Centre serves the Visitor Centre, the Modular Office, the Derbyshire Eco Centre and the Mount Cook Adventure Centre. It is now proposed to connect a new foul drain from the new building Discovery Centre 2 to this existing foul drainage system. The foul sewer within the Stone Centre is a private sewer and has not been adopted by Seven Trent. The Stone Centre is responsible for the maintenance and repair of the foul drainage system within their property. They are also responsible for the maintenance and repair of the foul drainage system within the land owned by Technolog Limited and owned by Harrington Properties Holdings Limited. In this connection, I refer to the transfer dated 23rd of May between Derbyshire County Council and the Stone Centre. The existing foul drainage system prior to 1st of October 2011 served the visitor centre, the original offices, now replaced with a modular office 
and the Derbyshire Eco Centre. It is estimated that there are at least 10 toilets and wash basins from these buildings connected to the foul drainage system. Planning permission was granted on the 22nd of May 2015 to the Mount Cook Adventure Centre. Within this building there are 35 bedrooms, each with a toilet, shower cubicle and wash basin. In addition there are further seven toilets, five shower cubicles, three wash basins and two urinals connected to this foul drainage system. With the new proposed building it is estimated that there will be at least another 15 toilets, 17 wash basins and five urinals that were discharged to this foul drainage system. 30 seconds left. It is understood it is understood that the foul drainage system between manholes FM1 and FM4 well, uh, have not been adopted. They have not been consulted with this planning application and should have been consulted. Drawing a drainage strategy does not show a strategy of foul drainage. The foul drainage system upstream of the visitor centre is not shown or considered. The alignment of the drainage system downstream of the visitor centre is incorrect. Thank you very much, Mr. Sibley. And can I just finish this? No, in fact, sorry, you've added three minutes. Okay. Okay. The next on my list is Mr. Peter Harrington, local resident, to comment on the application. You have three minutes. I'll let you know when there's 30 seconds left. Uh, I'm the Managing Director of Harrington Property Holdings, who own most of the uh, Ravenstall Road industrial estate, situated in the old quarry below the Stone Centre. I'm actually very much in favour of this development. I think it would be a huge benefit to Worksworth. But my problem is the sewage disposal from the site, which hasn't been adequately considered. The routing of the sewer shown on the application drawings is incorrect. The first part is correct. It travels down Old Lane but halfway down it diverts off through our industrial estate and discharges into the Seven Trent sewer on Cromford Road. With my objection letter I attached a plan showing this routing. The sewer was built in the 1980s by Derbyshire County Council purely to serve the Stone Centre. In the conveyance of extra land to the Stone Centre in 2000, the Stone Centre was made responsible for the maintenance of this sewer as far as the centre of our industrial estate. In 2011 a new Water Act was passed which made water authorities responsible for lateral drains, that is drains which serve more than one curtilage. Two weeks ago I was made aware of a, of a serious sewage leak behind one of our units. A manhole lid had blown off under pressure and the surrounding area was covered four inches deep in sewage. Strictly speaking this was the responsibility of the Stone Centre, however action needed to be taken very quickly so I rang 7 Trent hoping they would come to clear the blockage even though it hasn't strictly been adopted yet. They recognised the urgency and immediately came out. They spent all day 30th of March clearing it and restoring the operation of the sewer. The resulting mess is still about to be cleared up but I'm assured that it will be cleared up tomorrow. But it's a public health, uh, health hazard at the moment. I also contacted the Stone Centre through the CEO of the Institute of Quarrying, James Thorne, with details of the blockage, also attaching correct plans of the sewer, route of the sewer. Unfortunately, I have not had the courtesy of a reply so far. Since this sewer was built purely for the Stone Centre, two more activities, Mount Cook and the Eco Centre, have been built on the site and they also discharge into the sewer, both without any consideration of the sewer capacity. I strongly suggest if this application is approved, the following conditions need to be attached. One, the Stone Centre should confirm that Seven Trent has formally adopted the sewer under the 2011 Act and show it on their sewer plans. Two, if Seven Trent, Seven Trent do adopt the, adopt the sewer, then they need to investigate whether the sewer is adequate size and a good enough condition for the new loading of a 100-seat restaurant. In my experience as a civil engineer and owner, the industrial, thank you, owner of the industrial estate for 30 years, unless these two conditions are attached, there will be many more manhole blowouts on the estate, causing a huge public health problem to our tenants. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last on my list is Miss Viv Russell, the agent, to speak in favour of the application. Take it, you've changed gender. So you have five minutes. I'll let you know with this 30 seconds left. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the people who came to visit the um, the National Stone Centre this afternoon. Um, 
the, obviously the um, the application has been um, discussed in a great deal of detail and the consultation as part of the process. Really, what I would like to concentrate on talking to the um, the, the committee this after, um, this evening is about the opportunity that a uh, the the replacement of the the, the building. Um, the Stone Centre was a charity that was taken over by um, uh, by the Institute of Quarrying. There was the merging of two charities, non-for-profit charities, and uh, that has become an international base now for the Institute of Quarrying. The Institute of Quarrying has got um, branches um, all over the world, in Australia, New Zealand, a, um, Malaysia, Hong Kong, the uh, and the Middle East. Um, so this is a genuine opportunity to have an international base um, for for the the mineral products industry, which is actually now the largest manufacturing industry in this in in this country, um, where we see the 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 re, the um, revitalised and re rebuilt stone centre is um, is twofold. One is very much focused on the visitors' economy. Um, the A through to the end of September, we would be looking at a. Um, uh, People coming to visit not only the 40-acre site with the six quarries on there, but also uh, um, uh, exhibitions that are not only sort of museum-based, but we're looking at the, the technology that's being used in our industry now and future technologies. And to, it is very important that we use this as an opportunity to inspire um, young people coming into this uh, major, uh, major employer and manufacturer in this country. Um, the other aspect um, of it is that there's opportunities uh, and uh, um, of industrial tourism. We would be looking to, during the summer, run in a um, visits to the Tarmac Tunstead Works, Hope Cement Works, Longcliffe Quarries, showing showing the, the technology and the fantastic opportunities for, for skills and learning that, that our industry um, uh, um, uh, uh, I've, I've got the opportunity for. The, from really from October through to uh, um, to April, it will be very much about uh, education skills. We'll be looking to use the centre uh, um, for uh, um, for training uh, and amalgamating the in industries um, institutions there. And we've already got very very good links with Chesterfield College for apprenticeships, Buxton College for apprenticeships, and we're also engaging now uh, with the Princess Trust um, and uh, the Duke of Edinburgh's. So I think that it's given a fantastic opportunity for the um, for for the, for the area for not only improving visitors um, to the area, but also highlighting an industry that is that is really centred around Derbyshire. For the, the 46 years that I've been in industry and I'm president of the Institute of Quarrying, the vast majority of my time I've worked in Derbyshire as a tarmac director and formerly as a the group managing director of Longcliffe. So I understand the stewardship uh, um, and the, the importance of the local community. And I think this will be a fantastic opportunity for the for the community to get involved in the industry that, a, um, that provides over two billion pounds worth of GVA to Derbyshire. Thank you. Thank you very much. Adam. Thank you, Chair. Um, the National Stone Centre, as we know, is located in the former Coal Hills Quarry site. Uh, the, the current site provides a permanent story of stone exhibition, along with a cafe and educational facilities. Um, the site is partially within the Coal Hill Quarries Triple SI, um, and the National Stone Centre Quarries local wildlife site. Uh, and the site is also partially within the Middleton by Works with Conservation Area, so it is a fairly sensitive site, uh, important for local cultural heritage and recreation and education opportunities. Um, this application seeks planning permission for a replacement discovery centre, along with associated landscaping, drainage and car parking. Our policies in principle support uh, education enhanced facilities at this site. Proposals for a contemporary building of a high quality design, which officers consider is appropriate for the site in its context and subject to planning conditions are set out in the report and late reps. Um, the development would um, be designed to mitigate the impacts of climate change, conserve cultural heritage of the site, enhance public access, geodiversity and biodiversity. The application is therefore welcome and recommended for approval, subject to conditions 
and a planning obligation to secure a travel plan. Um, we've heard comments there on foul drainage. Um, the development is proposed to be served by the main sewer, which from a planning point of view is acceptable in principle. Um, the existing sewer may need to be upgraded to facilitate the development, and whether that is undertaken by a statutory undertaker or by the developer um, would be normally a matter for building regulations. Um, from a planning point of view, it is acceptable that foul sewerage goes to the main sewer. Um, if members thought it was necessary, uh, a planning condition could be imposed requiring a connection to the main sewer to be carried out before the development's first occupied. Happy to answer any questions. Councillor Slack. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's an excellent, excellent uh, development, this, and I fully support it, Elliot. But uh, we've got to get the drainage system right, obviously. Uh, if it, this restaurant, when it gets into use, will be an enormous lot of people using the the uh, restaurant, and obviously it's got to uh, take all the foul sewerage. So this has to be given to the officers to uh, sort this out and, uh, and uh, get this proper connection installed. And with seven trends probably helping, advising you, I think this is needed before a part of the application, really. So I'd like officers' comments on that. Would they take this over to work with seven trend to get this sorted out? Because it, uh, you know, it'll be a great opportunity when this gets in, gets uh, built and installed. So we don't want to fall down on the drainage system with Mano blowing up or anything like that, obviously. Yeah, so uh, just coming back to you, Councillor Slack, on, on that, that question, um, valid valid concerns and um, fully take on board what, what the um, first two speakers said. Um, as Adam has explained, from a planning perspective, connection to um, the main sewer is acceptable in planning terms. So there's two ways you could, I mean, we, we've suggested, we suggested a condition um, if members were um, concerned about such connections being made that the, the development shouldn't be occupied until um, connections to um, the main sewer have been made. Or you could go further than that if you wanted to see the details or for us to, to, to understand what those details are. Um, you could ask for the scheme to be submitted and approved um, and then for that scheme to be implemented as, as approved just to give us that extra control if you, if you wanted that. But it, it's within your gift really to recommend it a condition that just requires a connection or a condition that requires a scheme to be submitted to us and then and then approved but in planning terms the connection to the main sewer is is is, is all that we require well thank you but um as you just said um the development's got to be built yet so it can be going coincide with the building of the development to get the new sewer connected properly i would have thought so that would be the best way to go well, to ensure the development is appropriately drained in terms of foul sewage, I don't think it's a, an issue in, in, to impose a condition asking for that scheme to be submitted and approved and then for it to be implemented as approved. I think as a, as a condition, that's, that's something that could be imposed. Yeah, as long as you make sure that it is imposed. Yeah, so you could you yeah. could recommend approval with, with that condition yeah, if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, with that condition. Yeah. Okay, Peter. Uh, Councillor O'Brien. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I've got a couple of questions on the parking, actually, um, because we are we are keen to reduce the impact of uh, of new developments on um, people travelling by car. Uh, I see here that um, the proposal is to more than double the the size, the capacity of the car park uh, parking spaces from forty eight to ninety seven, and now that. That implies to me that if we are, even if the the proportion of people coming by car stays the same, that the number of visitors is going to double. Um, I'd be interested if that if that proposition was put forward in the application, because while I while I think that would be excellent, it does seem to be very ambitious to me to actually double the number of visitors. But my main point on this is that um, you make the point in paragraph seven. Uh, point five two. Uh, when you're talking about the the additional number of vehicles, um, you say in reality um, the levels will be lower than what is is um, uh, predicted due to car sharing and the use of other modes of transport. Well, if that is the case, why are we 
uh, agreeing to doubling the size of the car park if the uh, if if the if the increase in vehicles is not going to be uh, that which is suggested, you say it will be lower. Why are we therefore not lowering the uh, increase in car parking uh, capacity? It seems to be logical uh, to make the statement in 7.52, but then to agree to doubling the size of the car park. That doesn't seem to fit with our, our policy at all there. Um, and my second question um, is, is a slightly related one. Um, your condition 17 um, this is about a revised travel plan. Why are you leaving that until the building is completed? Or it seems to me not very sensible to leave it right until the end to require a revised travel plan. Uh, why don't we ask for the travel plan before uh, construction starts so then we're all certain it can be achieved? rather than leave it till the end and say, well, you can't actually occupy the building. I mean, in reality, are we going to stop the building being occupied because we've got some qualms about a travel plan? Why, why don't we agree that first so we all know where we are uh, before we start the building? It didn't, doesn't seem to be a, a, a very robust condition. So those are my two questions. Uh, thank you for... Good questions there. Um, in terms of paragraph 7.52, um, reading that back, there is going to be an increase. And I think the, that paragraph does see how that's how you've interpreted it that way. But essentially it says that the, tra the submitted transport statement says that the development would result, result in an increase of 45 vehicles in the morning peak and 55 in the afternoon peak. So the second sentence is, in reality, the levels would be lower than that increase. So there will be an increase, but... The highway authorities advised us that, in their view, it will be lower than the submitted the figures in the transport statement. But nevertheless, there will be an increase. Um, so on that basis, we're happy with the proposed increase in parking, bearing in mind um, that the additional parking spaces are, in by and large, being provided within existing areas of hard standing within the existing car park and on either side of part of the access road. So there isn't a new large car park being put in, it's just making better use of the space that's already there. Um, in terms of... I'll just come back on it. But if the increase is, is in parking spaces is 49, and you're saying the increase is going to be lower than the 45 or 55, why, why are we allowing 49 extra car parking spaces? But we think it is proportionate. I mean, in what it will actually turn out to be, bearing in mind that there are potential plans in the future for further expansion and bearing in mind it's using existing car parks, it seems sensible to use that space in the most efficient way possible. Um, I don't think there's any planning objection to that. Okay, it seems to me that it's going to be like five people travelling by bus or... In terms of the second question, um, condition 17, um, I don't think there's any reason to require a revised um, trans, um, travel plan to be agreed before development commences because that relates to how the development is used. Um, so I don't think um, I think there's any reason, no reason to stop the development being built or start to be built before we agree that. Um, we do have a travel plan submitted. It's the highway authority essentially required revisions to it. Um, so we are happy that a satisfactory travel plan can be agreed. Um, so I don't think it would be reasonable to put a precondition on to prevent any development. Um, I think, in my view, it is entirely reasonable to require that before first occupation. OK, anybody else wants to ask a question? No? I'm moving to debate. Councillor Froggett, you should... Are, are you wanting to ask a question? Okay. Councillor Froggett. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm quite happy to move this. Um, as the District Council's rep on Visit Peak Districts in Derbyshire, um, I attended the AGM where the presentation was given on this proposal. And I've got to say it was excellent. They do have a sustainable travel plan. Um, and everything about this proposal was first rate, all the boxes ticked, and it's going to bring an awful lot of tourism to works with and I think we should welcome it with open arms so I'm happy to propose it. Councillor Slack. 
Uh, yeah, I second that, Chair. It will bring a lot of uh, tourists into work. So I think. Are, are you wanting to add a condition about the drainage? Factor? I love it. I'm more open to that condition, what Chris has uh, mentioned, that it will that? follow that through on the drainage. Yeah. I shall keep keep an eye on that one because it I does need so. to be we correct that does. You know, the, the project's a great project and we don't want to be let it down with drainage. That's the, the problem, that's the, but it's, think, a, it's a great, uh, a great project, I think, entirely, so I'm yeah. fully supportive of it. Yeah, with the inclusion of that the condition, of that. which I think Councillor yeah. Frockett is quite supportive of. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Councillor Cruz and Councillor Rose. Yeah, it was just to come back to the uh, the drainage point. So for clarity, just so that I'm clear on what we're voting on, are we suggesting that the drainage scheme will be submitted for approval? And at what point will it be submitted for approval? What are we voting on? Yeah, that's, I think we need to, um, to hone down on exactly what it is that yeah, we're requiring the condition. I think um, prior to occupations too late, in the um, in the construction of a, a building of, of this scale and demands on, on existing infrastructure. So perhaps um, prior to works beginning on the, the superstructure, um, which would allow at least commencement of the development to take place and for them to consider um, what their options are with regards to making connections to the, to the public sewer. Um, I think that would be sensible. So prior to works commencing on, on the superstructure, um, a scheme of foul um, foul water connection to the main sewer shall be submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. The foul connection shall thereafter be made in accordance with the approved details, something like that. Okay, that, that sounds good to me. If I can just check with my colleagues, Councillor Slack and Frogger, that you're happy with that clarification. With that, Chris. Yeah, brilliant. I think just, just a comment as well um, in terms of the residents who've come along and uh, uh, from Ravenscroft Industrial Estate. I think it's good that you've brought your voices here this evening. And I think it was interesting um, that the gentleman who's representing uh, the Stone Centre um, talks about uh, stewardship. I think it's really important that they embrace this opportunity to make sure that, there isn't, that they're good neighbours and that the sewage really works for the community. So I think that would be really important. And then one other thing, I was at the Stone Centre the other day and there was some fantastic leek and potato soup. Please make sure you maintain the quality of the soup in whatever you do. Thank you very much. I don't think we can wrap that up into a condition. But anyway, Councillor Rose. Um, just, just by chance, my two four-year-old grandsons visited the Stone Centre yesterday and also the Steeple Grange Railway. So, you know, five minutes from home and what a wonderful day out. Um, so I, th I think this needs to, needs to be applauded. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I hadn't been to the Stone Centre until today. Um, and I think it needs a new name. It, it doesn't really invite you. Well, as, you know, as a woman, it doesn't really invite you to go there. Perhaps a clothes shop, mine. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, they um, they thoroughly enjoyed it. The, the the building is tired. You know, it needs to be pulled down. It's had its day, and I think if the, if the officers can just sort the sewage problem out, and I can understand the two gentlemen behind behind us being concerned, because I mean I would be. Um, so yes, I think I think it's fantastic. Yes, and good luck to everybody. Thank you very much, Councillor Rose. Councillor Fitzherbert. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, of course, we've got a history uh, in, in this county of, 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 of making, as, as you're all aware. We've got a huge uh, industrial heritage here. We've also got, you know, the new kids on the block, like David Meller, Hathersage, and CW Sellers Emporium that we saw going up today, whether you like this construction or not, Councillor <laughs> Rose. Uh, and we've got uh, Devon Valley Mills, um, you know, the heritage, heritage um, site. So I, I can applaud this. And it's not just about the visitors. I'm not just talking with my position as chair of, of, of Visit Peak District, but it's also about education and skills. And that's so what's, uh, which the applicants mentioned tonight. And I'm thrilled about that. I'm very pleased. OK, it's been moved and seconded for approval with the added condition about the sewer connection. All those in favour, please show. Any against? And any abstentions? 
So it's been granted. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Moving on. Item 5.6. <coughs> Application number 22 Stoke 013814. This is proposed that extension to existing agricultural story building at land opposite Lay Hill Farm in Doveridge Ashbourne. There are no speakers and there's no late reps. So who's taking this? Thank you, Chair. Um, site in Snow Countryside, uh, east of Doveridge, and is open fields bounded by trees and hedges. We visited the site um, this afternoon. Um, there is an existing agricultural building on the site which was granted planning permission in 2020. Um, the application proposes an extension um, of the existing building for agricultural store. Um, essentially what is proposed is another five bays, so essentially duplicating the building along its length. Um, the applicant has stated that the existing enterprise uh, consists of 180 sheep and there is an intention to reduce a cattle herd and increase the number of sheep on the holding. Um, officers therefore consider that on the evidence that has been provided that the development is reasonably required for agriculture and can be accommodated on the site without harm to the landscape or harm undue adverse visual impact. Uh, the application is therefore in accordance with our policies and recommended for approval. Thank you. Members, questions? Councillor Allison. Thank you, Chair. Um, first, I'd just like to say uh, that I'm glad that the enforcement case uh, that was raised against the uh, use of the current um, barn uh, for stone crushing has been completed successfully and that the stone crushing machines have been removed. Um, I've got a question really around the conditions because I can't really see anything in the report that specifically excludes uh, the crushing of hardcore and the commercial activity that's been uh, carried out there over the last sort of 18 months. So can that be a condition that's added to this uh, application? Thank you. Um, Thank you for the question. It's a good question. Um, yeah, we saw on site that there was no evidence of stone or cement crushing or concrete crushing being carried out on the site. So that does seem to have ceased. Um, the application is for an agricultural building. So in terms of use, that would be the approved use. If the buildings or land around them were used for crushing stone, that would be a material change of use of the land, which would need planning permission in, in its own right. And given that if there was a breach, that breach seems to have ended. I don't think there would be any justification in terms of the test for necessity to impose a planning condition on this permission, bearing in mind that the local planning authority could take enforcement action anyway. A planning condition wouldn't necessarily give us any more power or ability to prevent that. So my advice would be a condition wouldn't be necessary. Okay. I mean, I, I would like to see that condition put against the application because um, I know that that enforcement case went on for about 18 months and it's only due to this application coming forward for an extension, that that machinery is actually being moved. Thank you. Anyway, any more questions? No? I'll move into debate then. Anybody want to kick it off? Councillor yeah. Donnelly? Yeah. Well, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, we went on the visit this morning, or this afternoon, and uh, I couldn't see matter, much matter with the application, so I'm happy to, to move it. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor First Herbert. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to second it. I hope I, we have to take these things at face value. Um, and I did ask a few questions of the farmer, and he obviously seemed to know his stuff. I, I just hope he's not putting the wool over our eyes. Okay. Councillor Allison. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to see a specific um, condition against this application, but obviously the officers aren't prepared to do that. Um, Obviously, I've been contacted by residents for the last couple of years about what's been going on at that site. And, you know, frankly, I'm disappointed that we can't exclude that kind of activity. He carries out commercial stone crushing, which actually he resurfaces car parks for Sudbury Parish Council. So, you know, it's a, an activity that is known in the area. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. There's nobody else down on my list. So it's been moved and seconded uh, to be approved. All those in favour, please show. Any more? Peter? No. Against? And any abstentions? 
so he's been approved as set out in the report. And last but not least, application number uh, item number 547, application number 22, stroke 00025 full, changing for use of landfall glamping site, comprising the siting of 10 number bell timber, Shepherds, Hults, Stoke Timber Pods, four number bathroom units, two number woodland lodges, an operation comprising creation of a track, car park, and salary buildings, and associated landscaping at Turlow Fields Lane, Liston. So, I don't know whether there's any late reps on this. There's, there's a bit of late reps. So, if you want to read through that first, we have no speakers, and I'll go straight over to the officer. Everybody happy? All happy. In which case then, Adam, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this site is in open countryside and comprises agricultural land bounded by mature trees and hedgerows. Um, we did get access to the site uh, this afternoon. Um, the application proposes the change of use of the site to a glamping site. Um, various structures would be sited within the site as shown on the plan there um, which the applicant intends to site on the land between Easter to October and a uh, track and car park would also be created um, along with ancillary structures. Um, the site is two kilometres uh, south of Hogmaston and 1.8 kilometres north of Hullen Ward um, with poor highway and footpath connections and officers consider that the site is not in a sustainable location contrary to the provisions of policy EC9 uh, are set out in the report. Um, the Comparing the existing and proposed site plans indicates that trees and hedgerows would be removed to facilitate the development, although the agent has indicated that wouldn't be the case. The plans do show that they would need to be removed to facilitate what's proposed. No tree survey has been submitted and therefore this is also a technical matter forming a second reason for refusal for the application. Happy to answer any questions. Councillor Rose. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, this is an absolute joke. Uh, you know, deja vu, here we go again. The seventh application. Rabbits, alpacas, what's going to be next? It just appears that any of us, let's all of us individually, go, go and buy a small field, apply for a house, because that's what this chap wants to do. The site is an absolute disgrace. We've all been there today. I mean, I, I would like to ask the officers why the caravan, which is covered in graffiti, hasn't been removed. Um, and, you know, which, he, he keeps on coming back, doesn't he? He doesn't, he doesn't meet us, he doesn't come to a meeting, but he keeps on coming back with an application. Mm. Uh, you know, there's no point in really debating it. I mean, um, I thoroughly agree with the office, officer's recommendation that the site is completely unsustainable and I'm not going to waste my time or yours going through all the reasons for refusal. So I hope, hopefully you'll, you'll agree with that. Thank you very much, Councillor Rose. Councillor Donnelly. Yeah, like uh, Councillor Rose, I did uh, visit the site this afternoon and I was dismayed at the state of the caravan in all smashed to pieces. And the graffiti was not printable. Very colourful graffiti, I have to say. Very colourful, yeah. There was a few words, even I didn't know what they meant. Did you not? Know no. 
I'll let you know sometime. You know, okay. <laughs> let me know in the car park when we're finished. Um, I think it's it seems strange that I keep coming back time and time again with the same same principle. Which um, question I would I would like to ask um, Chris was the uh, um, section five, uh, number six, foul sewage issues dealt with by condition. What does he mean by that? Section five, number six. Yeah, some, yeah, perhaps. That's um, basically a summary of comments that we've received from the agent after the report was published. And uh, he's <clears throat> just saying that any issues with foul sewage can be dealt with by a planning condition, in his view. But Jeff may come back. There's no, there's no septic tank on Sardinthan, is there? So how do you deal with that? Strange. Maybe he's got to spread it. He could do that, yeah. Jeff, while I'm on, can I move it? You can indeed, if you want, Councillor well, Donnelly. I'm happy you want to move it for refusal? Yeah, I'll recommend it for Is refusal. that found a seconder? Councillor Fitzherbert. Thank, uh, thank you, Chairman. I mean, we did visit the site today. and If you saw there was little, if actually no, activity on site, rather than um, vandals and graffiti, etc., from previous applications, it, it certainly isn't acceptable for the proposed use, even with my tourism hat on. And I, I hope one day we can sort that site out, like many other... Um, rather questionable sites in, in our district. I, I second it. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor O'Brien. Yeah, I've got a, a question for the officers, Chair, if you don't mind. I, I want to come back to this use of the term we, we keep seeing, uh, remote and unsustainable location. Now, the, the villages in part of the district where I live would, would be offended if they were called remote and unsustainable but they'd love to have three or four bus services a day. Now, we see here that this site is served by a bus, has a bus stop adjacent to it with three or four buses a day. How do we arrive at this, this definition of remote and unsustainable? It seems to me, if, we, if we're using that sort of definition, the only place we're ever going to get any new tourist development is alongside the A6. <gasps> Said that, Peter. Yeah, just just coming back, with Chris. Yeah, just coming back to Councillor O'Brien on that that specific question. So the policy in our plan that deals with this type of development is very specific in that it requires um, facilities of this nature to be within an attractive, whatever that means, ten minute walk of services and facilities. So whilst you might have a bus service that operates infrequently in this area, if you were to holiday on the site. Um, as Adam mentioned, you're some distance away from the nearest settlements where you could access basic services and provisions um, to, 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 um, that you'd perhaps want to use if you were holidaying here. Um, so that, that's the level of assessment that's, that's made. It's the specific requirement of the, the policy um, that deals with this type of development and, and the requirement for it to be an attractive 10-minute walk of, of basic services and facilities. So if they provided a... a a shop on site would that satisfy their requirement yes i mean it, it, it that that would help in terms of the sustainability um but you've got to think if people are holidaying um in the area they might want to visit or might want to go to restaurants they might want to visit various attractions in the district and it's very difficult to access those from a site um that's remote from you know main settlements where you've got more ready access to to public transport and, and, and services and facilities okay so it's been moved and seconded for refusal as set out in the report. All those in favour, please show. Any against? And any abstention? That was uh, refuse unanimously. Item six, Councillor Fitzherbert. Um, if, if members may permit me, before I move the appeals report, um, I'd just like to add a few words as I close my last planning committee and indeed my last um, committee meeting my 12 years as ward member for the delightful Dovedale and Parwich. 
Uh, I've enjoyed my three terms, 12 years on council, and although I hit the heady peak of chairing full council for six years, the committee that I've most enjoyed, no, rather loved actually, has been this committee, the Planning Commission. Uh, for those of you who were back there in 2011, we had two committees, both north and south. Times have changed, and very probably for better in just having the one now, although the meetings do have gone on quite a while, haven't they, Chairman? Uh, and we had two separate chairmen then, for those of us, Peter and Sue, who, who remember. Um, over the years, um, I've been delighted with the debates and discussions we've had on the bus and also in the town hall and our various meeting rooms uh, when we fully debated the options and peculiarities about all the various applications. From the wind turbines, when across party, do you remember that one, Peter? We all wanted those eight at Grange, Grange Cliff and it was turned down. To single story extensions, to the noise at dog kennels and to the extensions at, at Endhoven to, to glamping pods and holiday lets. Oh, and HMOs. I had no idea what an HMO was, a term that I'd never heard of before the Matlock application a couple of years ago, houses in multiple occupancy. I've sat under three chairs, the late Tony Millwood, Gary Purdy, and of course, Jason here tonight, all of whom have guided us mostly serenely, sometimes amusingly, <laughs> and there could be other adjectives I could use, but through the myriad of rules that are the planning rules. And and there's uh, and as we've sort of half discussed tonight, um, uh, there's no planning rule for people to have a view, is there, ladies and gentlemen? And I thank them all for that. And over the years, we have overturned officers' recommendations for the betterment of our district, and uh, uh, which uh, has, has been very satisfactory, I'd say, but uh, of all the ones that we have approved, and I think most of these we overturned the officers' decisions, they were the holiday let unit at Broston, now a five-star letting, a farmhouse at Bradley for that young, energetic farming couple, do you remember them, who hopefully are building the house now, the glamping pods at Marston Montgomery, McMurtry and Hardings, although that's probably for approval, at Ashbourne, which is a great success in, in our town, and Russell's Tractor Emporium at Sudbury. Um, uh, which every time I drive past, I know some people aren't particularly happy with it, but uh, it, it's made a huge difference to, to the farming communities. But the one application that I'm, I'm really pleased about uh, that we passed as part of our members' interventions was, was Callow Hall at Mappleton in, in, in my ward, just north of Ashbourne. Now, hopefully you've all been there. If you haven't, please do, and come and see me whenever, and I'll take you around um, because I know it very well now. Having been recommended for refusal on heritage and landscape and, and heritage tree grounds, we managed to overturn the officers' recommended recommendations on a Zoom, if you remember, Tom, um, uh, a few years ago. And I think, in fact, I th it, was, um, it wasn't it was Chris, it was John uh, who was taking that one. I think, actually, he was pleased with the result. But it unleashed a £7 million investment uh, into Derbyshire Dales and created 60 jobs around the hotel and the tree houses on the site. And now this this application that we all approved, uh, nearly unanimously, Chairman, um, uh, has won the Sunday Times Hotel of the Year, as well as the Visit Peak District in Derbyshire Best Hotel Award. It's a great, great asset to our district, and, and we should be very proud of that. Whoever follows in our seats next time, in the next council term, I trust that the new committee will continue such good work. But also, we as members have got to be indebted to the team in the planning department, and not just to the ones that we see in the bus and in committee, but to the admin team that I, I don't really know their names, that collate the thorough reports and type up these myriads of, 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 of words that we have to plough through every, every time. Thank you very much to them. Thank you to all of you, um, um, and also to the legal department, Kerry, when she's helped us through, and her colleagues uh, on, 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 on dodgy items or particular items, and of course, Tommy, Lucy, and Angela, um, who helped us through with the, with the committee side of this and organizing us. Uh, but, but lastly, I'd like to thank all of the officers, and um, you know, so I'll name them, Adam, Gareth, Sarah, Andrew, Joe, Gina, Mark, and of course, Chris, okay? Um, I'm sure the next uh, set of members on this committee will, will challenge you and, and ask awkward questions and challenging questions. Uh, but, I, but I hope as you, as you continue your good work for our great, great Derbyshire Dales, you'll challenge the county and the highways department 
because one day, one day, maybe one day, <laughs> the highways department will understand ours and residents' views of traffic, something that we can never understand at this committee, can we? It's been a blast. I move the appeals report. <laughs> well, well done, Richard. Um, can, can I just thank all, all of you because I feel I've made many new friends during my one year on the Derbyshire Dales District Council. It was, it was never something I thought I would do um, because Lewis was going to retire um, in, in May um, and there was only one year to go. I thought, well, Oh, go on, go go for it. So, you know, for our family, it is the end of an era. Lewis had done 50 years um, in local government service. Um, the family, we started with his grandfather, um, have done 101 years. So, you know, that is something to be applauded, well, I think. So it will, it will, it will end with me unless my children decide to have a go. But... I, I do thank you and I do thank all of your colleagues as well and all of the other members on, on the council because I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And, you know, whatever we all do in the future, I wish everybody the best, best of luck and thank you very much. Thank you very much, councillors. Anybody else wishing to speak? Councillor Berthold, Councillor Slack. No? Go on, Peter. Have a go. Well, I can say I thoroughly enjoyed being the chair for the last four years, and I thank all of you, and especially the officers who I know. It's a tireless job. It's thankless at times, but they really do do a very, very, very worthy job and give us very, very good advice. So, as the chair of the committee, I'd like to thank you all. Hopefully you'll be seeing some of us again after May. There again, you might not. Well, it's just how the cookie crumbles. So anyway, thank you very much, everybody. And good night to this, the last of the 2019-23 mm -hmm.